the 6th of May, 1954, a young medical student called Roger Bannister sprinted his way into the history books by running a mile in under four minutes. The momentous event occurred on the Ifley Road track in Oxford, and time hasn't dimmed Bannister's memory of the race. It's wet, it's cold, but it isn't windy. And of the three things that I didn't want, uh, to happen on the day. Wind was the worst because it slows you down more than it helps you when it's behind you and it makes your running irregular. And the whole business of uh, running a four minute mile was to spread the energy as evenly as possible. And the first lap I thought Chris Brasher was going too slowly because for five days I had rested, so naturally I was very full of running. So I shouted faster and he took no notice and he said later A, he couldn't run any faster and B, he thought he was on, on time. First lap 58, just right, just under 60 because you sprint for the first uh, 10 yards or so. And then at the half mile, 158, perfect. And then naturally in the third lap, when uh, Chris Chataway had taken over, um, things were slowing down a bit. So the third lap was 62, and that made three minutes 05. And then I had to decide whether to overtake him then or just wait for another bend. Another bend meant that I didn't have to run wide and I didn't want to run an extra six yards because uh, that actually was the amount by which I broke the record. So I kept behind him and then uh, did all I could. And I didn't know whether I was slowing down, but I thought I should be capable of running a last lap in 59 seconds, and uh, there we are. It was the Everest of athletic achievement and brought Bannister worldwide attention. After coming fourth in the 1952 Olympics, it was his chance to redeem himself in the eyes of the British public. The first is I'm very glad to have done it in Oxford because this was the track on which I ran my first mile race in my life about seven years ago when I first came up to Oxford. The second is that throughout the winter I've been watching the newspapers seeing whether Landy would do it first or whether Santi would do it first in America. And I, I'm very glad that, that it has come from England in the end. 46 days later, Australian runner John Landy also beat the four-minute mile. But when the two came up against each other in the 1954 Empire Games, it was Bannister who took the honours. Landy was leading for most of the race, but at the crucial moment he looked behind to see Bannister's position and was overtaken. Later that year, Bannister retired from racing to concentrate on a career as a neurologist. And he found medical work provided bigger challenges than athletics. I am primarily a doctor, and that was the greatest challenge. And you never reach the end of learning uh, how to do things better and um, how to treat patients better and how to do research better. So I undertook a deliberate uh, challenge which I would never achieve. I think it's very good to be put in your place in that way. Bannister believed the four-minute mile was a psychological rather than a physical achievement. The man who can drive himself further once the effort gets painful is the man who will win, he said. Despite a lifetime of honors, including a knighthood, and a coin minted especially to mark the 50th anniversary of his run, Bannister is philosophical about the race that made him an overnight sensation. Oh, my medical career, but it's not something which is public and uh, um, yeah, one doesn't expect uh, any acclaim. But once you've been through a sporting fame phase, then you, you realize how insubstantial it is. It's, it's very fleeting.